I am uh, happy to welcome now to the news desk Jonah Fink, president of net to foam Jonah, thanks so much for joining us today on the New Jedder News Desk. Thanks for having me. The pleasure is mine. Glad you're here. Thank um, you. We'd like to start with you talking just some context about call center as a service and the market trends that are driving it. Maybe a good place to start is just what the customer pain points are that are driving the whole CCAS trend. Yeah, it's, uh, it's in fact a, a question that's very pertinent to an experience that I had last night that I'd like to share. Same. A colleague of mine that is here with Enterprise Connect, he wanted to reschedule his flight back home, and it literally took an hour on the phone with a major airline to resolve what I think is a very um, you know, simple so, you know, question mark and uh, solution that we need to pr uh, provide for. Uh, it, the call went for an hour. We spoke to three different people, and it was not resolved. I think that's a perfect sort of picture or scenario that we're looking to solve uh, for our customers uh, around the world. Um, it, it, it feels kind of shocking that in 2023 it, it took that long and, and yet no resolution on top of it. Yeah, it was really, really unbelievable. And what, think about the cost structure of that call. You know, you know, so you hang up. That call alone probably cost a few dollars just to implement between speaking to three different agents, not resolving, wait time on hold. So I think that answers your question specifically. We drive that customer experience and the trend is to automate those customer experiences. Um, a, a parallel trend that, that is, uh, I think, also unique to call centers as a service is <coughs> moving the functionality, security, and, and management um, to the cloud to change up the, the call center equation. How, how's that? Uh, give us, give us a, a, a progress report on, on that trend, if it you will. It's actually a simpler transition to move off metal to go to the cloud. Yeah, many of the customers today, um, we're actually in that education process. There's really two experiences that we have today. One is the, the displacement, where they're using another type of solution. Maybe okay. it's on metal, maybe it's on cloud. But maybe it's more of just this first time evolution for the customer. We play a lot in the underdeveloped market. So CCAS is still very new. So you know, at times moving to the cloud could actually build for a much more easier transition. We spend a lot of time in that focusing on that onboarding aspect, that training aspect and the onboarding aspect, and really that's an educational piece that is really, really important. How easy is the onboarding? How intuitive? And today we are more and more in that sort of self-kiosk portal experience where maybe we just in front of one screen instead of speaking to 10 people to be onboarded. And that's a very important focus for those customers that are looking to trans transition to the cloud. So as you also transition, um, how, d how does the, the transition from a conventional call center to, to CCAS uh, begin to impact the, the, the customer experience. Um, talk about some of the, the critical CX features and outcomes that um, might help us avoid the, the fate of your, your friend last night. Yeah, I, I think that it's all based on intelligent routing, skill-based routing, and these are decisions that if humans are making, I think we're going to continue to see delay after delay within that, within that process. Okay. I think software needs to be put at work to be able to sort of bio-authenticate, to be able to ask, you know, if you will, canned questions that can receive canned responses. So much of the experience that my colleague experienced last night was a standardized experience, which I think could have been resolved within minutes. So this idea of being able to move to software, let the software do the work for you, really making sure that you're speaking to the right agent, you're speaking to the right people that have the right answers, and that could all be done with software. Um, shifting gears to the whole work from home trend, um, I, I think we're all basically in agreement that work from home is really not going to go away even as the pandemic begins to recede. This is this has really become standard operating procedure for most organizations. Um, how do you see CCAS embracing this work from home model? Um, what are some of the special challenges here? I think the whole work from home scenario that the pandemic so much triggered for us was almost this ideal educational platform for us to really understand what is remote, what is virtual, and how could cloud sort of feed into that. So I think, you know, we, uh, we sort <coughs> of struggled uh, with the pandemic, but the pandemic was definitely an educational platform for technology, for automation, for software, being able to really be efficient and to succeed in an untethered environment where you do not have to be sort of sitting in corporate. You could have those contact or center functionality remotely. 
So much so that technologies are built now um, that we're able to monitor that agent sitting from home or sitting from the airport or sitting on their mobile. Sure. Similarly to how those monitoring skills were done when everybody was in, we're able to extend that cloud aspect and being able to put in monitoring and all of those efficiencies against metrics and KPIs, even when your staffing is sort of out of office. So, so flexibility, cost savings, uh, performance, and like just it's... And just being nimble, just being able to sit anywhere in the world. You know, we're in nine international markets and being able to sit in an international airport and be able to do your work is something that I think, you know, um, really the world is moving into. Yeah, and, and the expectation that it's seamless. Seamless, absolutely, and that starts from the onboarding. The onboarding needs to be seamless all the way down to the full A to Z deployment. Um, I guess the other trend that is, is, is in the air here very much so is um, the idea that organizations will end up adopting some hybrid of both CCAS and UCAS um, using each solution where it makes the most sense economically, logistically. Um, do you view these services as complementary? Um, what's your expectation of how they'll evolve over the next year and a half? Yeah, I, I absolutely view them as complementary. Um, our go-to-market first with UCAS has allowed us now to get into CCAS conversations. So CCAS conversations are, are really allowed a co critical workflows that the enterprise requires, whereas UCAS is a little bit more about the dial tone, the message, and the video. CCAS is about the different types of problems and pain points and experiences that these enterprises are looking to solve. So as we're already in the door with UCAS, we could then have those experience-based conversations which have a perfect foray into some of the features and the functionality that our CCAS solution can offer. Um, you mentioned that Net2Phone is currently in nine markets. Um, Talk about how Net2Phone plans to scale and even some of your expansion plans for the future. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're very, very strong in LATAM. We have our eyes and ears to the ground and, and, and other you know, underdeveloped markets. We think the underdeveloped markets are very much ripe for these new technologies. And, you know, working with the channel, working with carriers in some cases with our go-to-market has really been allowing us to open up to many markets around the world, having a very strong hold on language, currency, culture, ensuring that our product sets are really tailored to these individual markets is something really where Netphone shines. What do you notice in terms of the different markets you've entered with the geographic diversity? What does that mean in terms of requirements? Are, are requirem uh, requirements can't be cookie cutter. Talk about what you're hearing and seeing there. Yeah, Brazil's one case, right? Regulatory is, is, is not the same as it is in, in, in Mexico, for example. So, you know, taxes, regulatory, Customs, just being able to get your product into the market. You know, by Netophone having our feet on the street, so to speak, in all these markets, we figure that all out. So literally, our product is available today in nine international markets, and the formation or the ingredients have all been sorted out in terms of our go-to-market. Service is being delivered, hardware is being delivered, experiences are being delivered. Okay, D are you bumping up against vestiges of the old PTT and monopoly carrier in, in You know, in many of these markets, we actually act as the CLEC and ILEC ourselves under the parent okay. company IDT. So, you know, it's interesting, I was having a conversation earlier today. It takes us one day to port a phone number in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and we all know here in the United States it could take up to two weeks. Interesting dynamics in some of these international markets, but by the parent company IDT being that license holder, being that telco, and then combining it over the top with our cloud capabilities is a one-two punch uh, that we're really proud of. What about technical requirements diversity? Um, uh, wireless backup or specific bandwidth or, or throughput requirements? Uh, specific applications that need, say, quality of service considerations? Uh, how does that come up? Super, super important, and these are challenges that we face in internationally, and again, a company like IDT Netophone has figured it out. This is years of working on voice compression, ensuring that that voice is compressed to its highest compressive value set in markets where bandwidth, for example, could be challenged, or you know, in some of these remote locations, it, it could be even more challenging. So the years of concentration on compressing and technology de delivered locally. So we're locally within these markets. We're not hauling the traffic back to the US or North America or anything like that. If you're making a phone call from Sao Paulo to Rio, that call's not going back to Newark, New Jersey. Sure, sure. So keeping your data local, keeping your traffic local, really helped us minimize some of the challenges that you'd expect within these markets. Does, does that give you a competitive edge as you enter these new markets? 
quality is number one, right? When we sure. talk about QoS and your question before, quality number one, and that really still remains as a key metric for your market success. So absolutely, having that stronghold, having that knowledge set of being able to deliver quality of service within these markets makes all the difference in the world compared really on your battle card. All right. Um, what, are you, what are you hearing here in the air at Enterprise Connect? What are, what are some of the, the interesting topics that Wonderful are Wonderful new technologies that we're looking to continue to layer on with our embedded suite of solutions. So beyond the opportunity to talk to our customers and talk to our partners, we see wonderful technologies. Really, this is a learning platform for us, and we're really pleased to be here. Well, uh, we really appreciate you coming by the No Jitter News Desk today. Um, great perspective on uh, CCAS and UCAS and, and the global communications and collaboration market. Thanks for having me. Jonah Fink of net to phone thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.